Welcome to the second part of our webinar, Perfect Switch from RFM5 to RFM6. I hope you attend the webinar last week that I presented. Today, I won't be the presenter. Andreas Niemeyer will do the presentation. I will be the moderator and I will answer your questions together with Florian Hiddemann. Yeah. How you can ask questions, I showed it at least for the attendees who participate the first time. I switch off my webcam that you can see the full screen. Yeah, just click on that button with the question mark, enter your question here, press send, and we will receive your question and we will answer you. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, that's all. From my side for the moment, I hand over to Andreas Niemeyer. Andreas, it's your turn. Thank you. Then I take over with the topics perfect switch from RFM5 to RFM6 part two. Today, I want to show you in my program the differences between RFM5, RFM6 and show you points what you can do in our new software generation but you can't do in our old software generation. For this, I selected, let's say, five main points. Yeah? Um, understand and interpret the building, efficient usage of couplings, substructures save time, simply grasp reality, and finally evaluate results in a targeted manner. I know this point sounds pompous, um, but I, I, I selected this because let's say in the word is some reality and, and I really selected the examples to show you why. And this is now the point where I jump into the live demo with the main point understand and interpret a building. For this we open a new model. I call it U1 and let's say because we speak about buildings I select here the add-on building model. This option changes or transfers the program to a building software. It gives or it, it changes the mind that the program thinks like a building, it interprets it like a building and um, how this is working and how you can specify a building now I want to show you. For this I start let's say because I'm I'm lazy I, I start with a, a geometry input I, I read in here below guide objects a background layer um, I can select here a DXF layer um, you see it now here in the preview this layer gives me the coordinates and the sizes of the buildings mainly and uh, because I just see, okay, the TXF is rotated, I, I can change it here. So you, you define here the angle and the program is rotating it, for example. After confirmation, um, we have it now in our plane, similar like the grid points, and can start modeling. Now, this is, let's say, at the moment, no building or something. It's only the, let's say, the, the limits of it. And uh, so we start now with the building model and specify the stories. Let's say we have a two-story building. The first story have a height of five meters. The second have maybe a height of 3.2 meters. Yeah. My, my target is to use different sizes. Why? You will directly see. And further, I specify, hey, program please consider the let's say floors as rigid diaphragm in the 3d structure and additional the slabs or ceilings what we have from the first and second story should be supported on let's say hinged supports of course you can select something no and um, now i confirm and no no blinking and highlighting uh, infos will appear only you will see in the middle uh, such a, a, a let's say dimension what shows us the high of the stories not more and not less 
And now we can start modeling the building. For this, I use, for example, the column command. Let's say we have here beams. Um, we know the beam should be a concrete a rectangle. So I go into my library, select here a square rectangle, maybe with a size of 300 and a concrete, let's say C30. Um, let's select it here. C30 and you see the program directly find us the suitable concrete to this keyword and we confirm this. It's going gray and now we can start modeling. See, so let's say the exotic stuff is now. The program asked me here with a small dialogue, oh, do you want to have this column in story one or zero or in both? In my case now both and now I pick it. Oh, I can't find the snap point. So it's like in a CAD program, you can activate it here. Yeah? Or and now let's go to the other places. And maybe if it's easier, we can use a top view and jump around this duck. Duck. Duck, duck, duck. Of course, you can also copy if it fits. We make we have no rules for this. Uh, it's it's still like a half that you can do everything in every stage. But uh, now have a look if we change to to let's say isometric view. Oh, maybe make this box here. Um, you see, you have the columns here and we see right lengths, 5 meters, 3.2. The same for, let's say, the ceilings. Yeah? Um, we can take here maybe a polygon floor plate and we specify here, for example, we have a thickness of um, C30 and a thickness of maybe 22 centimeters and go and now we let's say we pick for example the corners of the building for us and maybe we realize oh we need it only for the first one and not for for the other so we can let's say change it during picking because the program will realize it and now you see um, we have this ceiling inside also with the opening for the stairway. If you want to do the same for let's say for the top, um, we go ag open again the command and say now maybe the upper story and we pick the points here and maybe this corner point here and right click now we have the upper story yeah and now we see oh we have also walls here no problem there is also a wall command where you can select maybe different thickness maybe here uh, with um, 24 millimeters or centimeters but for concrete and um, if you pick it you can say for which stories I say for all and now we define the wall should run from here to here and the same for, for here to here and maybe the last one from here to here now, so easy it is to define a building with walls, ceilings, columns, and now it works like before. We can apply uh, maybe supports. Um, so, for example, here um, also nodal supports. Now, maybe here that we can grab all at once. Now, so this it is, yeah, not more, not less. And um, of course, we can start calculation. And um, 
you see the program is uh, dividing the calculation job of the log case 1 in three parts. Why? And this why you will see now in the results. You see, maybe if I scale everything up, um, you see here we have three type of results, walls, floors and both together. And this is now the way of thinking like a building. Yeah, you have now, for example, here only floors. This means the program interprets the floors as separate substructure. It calculates the ceiling with separate supports and separately. So I get for these elements only bending moments, but but no membrane forces because I assume um, these slabs works rigid in plane that maybe the main structure of structure is working but this ceiling itself I calculate separately and the support reactions from the floors I transfer to the walls that I can calculate the core of the building this means in this model we have three calculations one for the first uh, ceiling, second and for the walls itself. So it's separated and this ceiling is not hanging on the top, for example. Yeah. So now, um, now let's say extend this example and I prepared something. So I close this and I open, let's say a more excess, um, a more, more exhausting example regarding uh, it's called building model yeah so here you will see the same building with more stories so with different uh, story high so with the uh, uh, bottom uh, floor with the ground floor with some regular floors and a, a roof floor and um, you see also here, uh, for example, the increasing normal axis uh, gradient of columns because I just visualizing the wall result. Uh, also the columns belong to it. And here we have our slab uh, or, or ceiling where you see these are the, let's say, uh, ceilings here with water deflection because snow, but uh, it acts separately and if you visualize maybe the normal axis force you see um, they are not the, the lower slab have no effect to the upper for example if we uh, show us here uh, a life load you see the life load maybe from this ceiling is going down but have no effect upwards yeah? so with this type of calculation you can control the flow of forces further um, you see um, with these uh, results, if we if we watch here, for example, again the self weight result, um, you get it not only graphical, then you get also a, a table for it for this result. You see, here in static analysis, we have not only way of thinking for members, surfaces, solids, and also for stories. The program gives you information about the mass per story. The program gives you the center of mass for every story and the center of rigidity for every story. So it it calculates it in this separate task. Further, you get for every, let's say, wall in the story, if you specify it also, let's say, forces. So how you can define a wall? Here you see in your building model, uh, we have not only stories and floor sets, then also walls and deep beams. In this case I defined um, three walls, let's say. They have a, a, then a section like a beam and uh, one wall is this, this and this in front here. And if I define it as wall, the program interprets it like a beam. Yeah, and all these forces you get locked down here in this table for every load case. You see the increasing normal force in load case surface for wall one, wall two, 
War 3 you get uh, let's say story actions the story actions are interesting if you take a look for example on wind so we have for example here a wind load case in this horizontal direction um, the building model allows you to interpret also the building like a diagram and uh, gives you the separate components per story so maybe the wind load on a top story brings 20.4 the next 30.2 30.2 because we have a similar high so everything is locked down what happens over the high of a building and um, this should help you to interpret the buildings like it is if you can let's say simplify it like uh, it is concept yeah if you have some let's say stories in between what needs the transfer of or the the reaction of deflection or the stiffness of the floor uh, set itself you can control it here um, by by defining if it's rigid or not or if it's semi-rigid so all these options are available per floor set yeah? so this brings me to let's say to the next point um, what means um, if you have more complex building what are not only like this story wise building uh, uh, ceiling column ceiling column and so on and um, then of course you have to to take all calculation options and and to consider stages in between and stages uh, for stages we created a, a, a further add-on but to explain you how this is working I prepared a model yeah? I call it construction stages and this sh should uh, 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 give you imagination what or which type of issues or challenges could happen by designing buildings yeah? um, here I have a, let's say a simple building um, you have uh, columns restrained on bottom you have a beam what is hin let's say supported hinged on the columns and you have a roof from timber what is also supported hinged here yeah? and if you watch let's say uh, the forces from self weight at first everything is looking nice yeah? um, you get here in columns the increasing normal axis diagram clear yeah? But uh, what is a little bit uh, unclear why I get such big compression forces in the timber beams according self weight, even if there is no load on it. Yeah? And this topic comes because if the beam is bending through so this massive concrete beam, um, it, 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 uh, it pulls down the roof and it acts like a truss. And the result is that uh, this uh, this beam here, this truss uh, beam here, have tension, and this let's say is a little bit unreal. And this is exactly the point where you say I cannot model everything in 3D. I have to take care what is being first and what is being afterwards. And uh, for this, we uh, implemented let's say stages. Of course, such an option exists also in the old generation but it was really restricted only according uh, third order large deformation analysis now it's opened it's completely worked in, in the program and open for all calculation series how it's working so at first maybe we make a stage let's say column in the column stage we have uh, members and nodal supports the members clear this two supports also clear this two then we have a next stage let's say Sigurda um, here let's assign it's really easy it's like 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 bricklaying yeah and the next is um, roof so for example oops uh, for example um, I selected these three stages with um, these elements. You can visualize it also. Uh, if you say here column, maybe I hide this, what is not active, um, girder, roof. Now the program have to know 
which loads acting on it. Yeah. So let's say clear. Um, I want to design, let's say, column stage, girder stage, roof stage. And I expect that in stage one columns only self weight and wind is acting. In girder is, let's say, wind acting additional and in roof is acting snow and wind. And what happens now? The program is creating load combination for every stage. So you have here a, sp a separate column for stage one, stage two. So in stage one, we get only self weight and wind. For stage two, we get self weight and wind. For stage three, we get self weight, wind and snow. No? Yeah, and so easy it is. So when I design now um, this uh, design situation, um, the program is calculating uh, this design situation for every stage and it's clear it cannot calculate all at the same time because the stages itself are always the basis for the next. What means if I calculate here stage one only for the column, let's say with um, wind and um, they, they are loaded will be deflected then we place the beam on it, it will be loaded and finally get also the deflection and here you see uh, also the let's say brick camber and on this deformed state we define finally for construction stage 3 the, the roof and you see now in this type of analysis we have no tension force on it. And this is what I want to show you. RFM6 gives you now the option to, to work like this. Yeah, you can really define how you assemble it on your building site. And in comparison to RFM5, you have now the choice to use it according to geometrical linear analysis, second order or third order analysis. It's even also possible that you say the stages itself should be analyzed according to third order. And the individual load situations on the stages should be calculated linear. It's also possible. Then the program is changing the basis of this. Yeah? So, further, this was now to the example think like a building and interpret it. If you uh, or we together um, come now to the next point and this means efficient usage of couplings because we coupled here let's say if we take a look the stages so construction stage with load but there are more couplings possible and RFM6 or the new generation is living from it this means um, I close this example and open a new example um, what means I want to take over um, reactions. For this I have uh, let's say a uh, where is this ceiling about first floor and the second model ceiling about ground floor. Ceiling where it is ground floor. Um, to use the space of monitor, let's say I, I remove the spreadsheet and uh, or organize it in these two views. So we have here first floor, here we have ground floor. What is this difference? Let's say go through model. If we maybe take a top view, you see we have here line support. So we simulate here a wall and um, we have a load cast self weight, we have uh, maybe without results, we have a load here, we have a load here, and we have a load here. And all will be combined. In this model, maybe from top view, we have no wall below, so this is one big room. Um, and uh, if you take a look on this uh, load cases, we have self weight, 
we have maybe one load for this room and we have one load for this room. And now the question appears, if I calculate um, this structure here, I get, let's say, for every load case, support reactions. When I activate it, we get deflections and, of course, also reactions. And now we have to apply these reactions on this model here. For this, I have to, to, to think about how I want to bring in. And the bringing in is for me now, I have here two basic independent loads cases and I copy it three times and say, okay, this is maybe three from top, four from top and five from top. If you wish, you can also sum it up. You will directly see what happens now. Yeah. Um, what we should avoid is um, we have here these three load cases exactly um, because moment one is clear, second is clear. Here this because I copy it. We don't need a load on it here. Delete and delete. Yeah. So they are empty. These last three. And now you can use for taking over um, the wizard. We have here Import Support Reaction. You can say, hmm, I want to import it from ceiling about first floor. It's in the project from Global Center. You say, you can decide, uh, you want to import uh, support forces as object loads or as free loads from all supported nodes and lines on what means these lines and nodes and uh, on surface 3 and 5, it means these surfaces. See, in comparison to often 5, we can uh, uh, use nodes and lines without exotic connections. Further, you can define automatically transfer to load cases. It means load case 1, surface load should run into load case 1. The other three load cases should run into, uh, maybe manually, um, into four, five, six. So here you really can decide which load direction should be moved or transferred. You see now the program visualizes it with question mark and if I calculate it, the program will suction the reactions from the upper model, so from this and define it as load on this. Use connections efficiently. This is the point what I want to show you. You don't have to write something, then it's done automatically. And what is really nice now, you see um, now self weight clear, it's a permanent weight. And also on this case where we have a wall built on top but below not. You get it also as load here, as free load. The regular load cases are not used, like defined in the table. And here we have the loads from the separate load case, from this room, from this room, and from this room. And this is, let's say, you, a, a really a efficient usage. And what is also really a difference to the old generation, if you have now the situation, for example, in permanent state, we have uh, maybe a load from roof. So for example, I use a standard load with one um, here and here. And we have also a horizontal effect, maybe in X. Um, let's use here one, okay, and uh, let's use here minus one, that we have some roof load effect. And you specify now in the lower model, in the uh, wizard, hey, uh, program, please use for the permanent state, not only C directions and also X component, and confirm it. The program wants to delete the result. Yes, uh, um, we have to save, clear. Um, and now, um, if when we recalculate, the program is using the data from the model above, also the horizontal stuff, 
Um, so it calculates at first the first floor above and then it using this results in the lower one. And you see now in load case one we have now also this horizontal effect in the forces. Yeah. So this could be could be quite efficient in your work and if you say I want to freeze him something no problem go here to disconnect and disconnect dependent model go then the program gives you let's say for this load case stupid loads would have no connection to something. No? So um, efficient usage of couplings. Yeah, you can use updated, and but you can also break the update. And now let's come to the next coupling. <laughs> Completely different topic, but it's also coupled. Um, for this, I close all, and um, open a new scheme. Let's say you have to design. Um, I use a defined cross section from aluminum. Yeah? For this, I open our cross section modeler. Um, I call it UU1, for example. Yeah? And um, you know, in comparison to our old generation, in, an, in, in, in the old stage we had uh, shape thin and shape massive, two programs. Now we have only one, and you can decide here massive. Thin volt. Yeah. Let's start with massive one and create uh, let's say user defined section from aluminum what is extruded. For this I open it, specify the material, um, what means um, make here a new row and write here maybe from label 60, 61 and use such a T6 material. And now um, we can uh, start modeling this section and of course you can do so many things but I, I use these grid points now. So we have maybe here line with 60, 60, 20, 20, some section like this. Yeah. This is now a polyline, I can extrude it, so you have here functions to extrude it. So let's say we have a, a thickness of 3 millimeters so we extruded 1.5 in left and we extruded 1.5 in right. The center line we can break and this, let's say these two lines we can select and can break it into single lines. Now um, let, let's say <laughs> the geometry is closed. I close here and here and because this is manufactured manually I have here some roundings. I, I, I really, uh, let's say, I want to show you these roundings because um, this is always in, com in connection or in conflict with, let's say, thin volt sections would, would have, a, let's say, a stripe geometry. And this stripe geometry is always the break between uh, massive and thin volt and now we reached with our developer state that you can simulate both. So now this is a let's say first part where we say okay this line geometry is from aluminum, we fill it with a material and we calculate it and we get section values. Yeah? Quite easy. Now um, we say this, this section could be used in RFM and but but you can't design it because the aluminum codes wants to know the C to C C to T stripes regarding buckling and shear. And um, for this it's no problem in our section you can extend it. You can say yes this is a thin volt and additionally also aluminum stuff should be considered for the stripes. And um, now let's uh, say, let's insert these stripes. Yeah, um, we can say we have here stripes with a thickness of three millimeters uh, from this aluminum and we insert it and you see they are really rectangular and have here overstand. But this is no problem because 
we use for this mixed calculation of massive and thin walled sections, let's say for the bending relevant part, uh, we use this part. And for the, let's say, shear and buckling relevant parts, we use these stripes. And you see, the program will move these stripes intelligent according to these roundings. Yeah. So now, um, when you calculate this, you get also section values. No problem, but then you can use it also for design. And this is the digital connection you can use efficiently. So I store it and now you jump into OFM and you can, let's say, open a, let's say, make a easy aluminum calculation, call it a, a U7 and check here aluminum design. And um, yeah, let's define a new um, member. Um, define here a section, go to library, say uh, I have a user defined section, UU1, yeah, um, and uh, insert it into your model. The program is efficient, takes directly the material what you defined, it's, it's hard coded. Yeah? And uh, now um, you can pick this member into your space. Uh, you see, you have this geometry directly in your structure, you can for me at the moment now, it's irrelevant, we can support it. Uh, of course, we can also load it, maybe let's apply two kilonewton per meter. And um, yeah, and now the concept of RFM6 is working. You only pick on calculate all and the program is doing the rest. So it's meshing and then it uh, creating combinations and uh, is doing the aluminum design. And you see, you get not only deflection, then you get also, uh, let's say here, a deflection curve. Yeah. So this is really cool, but now I want to s show you the next stage. If you realize um, you made maybe an error or you, ha you have a change, so the cross section changes a little bit. Double click the member uh, and you have here a, a R section button. And uh, this means the program opens the R section live inside RFM in a special mode. And here you can say, yeah, I have a new stripe here um, because I forgot it. And you add it, okay. And um, or maybe I, I read you because not that I destroy it. Again, a section from here to here, yeah. And now, of course, uh, now I know what, what I made wrong. Um, not from concrete and from aluminum. Yeah. Now, now the color fits. Yeah, exactly. The program is realizing the same material is merging this stuff so far, but, but these corners I don't like because this is a, a little bit, uh, un nice. So I, let's say I change my view and optimize it. So I say here I have a rounding of one and the inner, inner curve. Yeah. And the outer curve is maybe four. And you see directly how these stripes are changing. No? And now you see, okay, this, uh, uh, surface now gets red written because it, it it still have these lines into, yeah. So we remove it and change it to this, and now everything is fine. Uh, this stuff could be deleted. This stuff could be deleted, and now it's ready. Uh, we can save and return, and the program is is updating this section. Okay, and now we have this section in our program, yeah. And I press calculate all use connections efficient and you can directly design it yeah so we really invested a lot of work in this life change of sections you can do it for all type of sections not only our sections and also standard sections um, what should help you and now you see you get directly a design i hide it um, a design curve for the new section so um, now um, this brings me to the next main point, what means 
substructures save time. Substructures. Yeah, how to introduce you here. So I close this stuff, yeah, and open a new model. Um, in this new model, I define maybe at first a name, UU8, uh, whatever, um, and I define here the multi layer model. Why? You will see. Yeah? So, at first, our task or image for imagination, you're a designer, you have to create a story from, a, from timber frameworks. Of course, we can read in a DXF uh, floor plan, but now let's make it pretty easy. So I'd say, uh, when we are on top view, uh, we can say our building is maybe typical 12 meters long, 9 meter uh, with, uh, we describe it really easily with here a few lines, let's say uh, 4 meter. So this is only my idea of an easy floor plan. Yeah, not more, not less. And now um, we say, yes, okay, um, uh, this floor plan should be created with three meter high timber frame walls. How you can do this? Um, in this case, um, we select lines, copy, say, okay, please create, maybe copy it minus three meter in high, uh, create between original line and new line, new surfaces, and the new surface should be a standard surface with, let's say, now the multi-layer add-on is coming in with a type beam panel. Yeah, And here you can specify sheeting. For example, we have a sheeting from uh, manufactured timber yeah so I select here one and uh, define this is maybe uh, autotropic for surfaces yes and the thickness is maybe 50 millimeters and the same I use for the another sheeting on the other side also 50 millimeters and for the framing members so the members around I specify maybe a new section, uh, maybe here a section from timber, new material, maybe a C24, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, the sizes are maybe 6 centimeter to 200 uh, to 20 centimeters that I have some space for insulation, yeah and um, we can select this section for all framing members and now we have to specify the connection of the framing members to the sheeting so i use staples with uh, 1.5 uh, 40 with a distance of 74 5 millimeters and for the inner studs i use this same section with a spacing of 625 millimeters it's the width of the panels um, and here we use other steppers with uh, 1.5 uh, 40 75 and from this the program calculates the spring uh, how it's connected yeah. so now we have defined the thickness and if we copy the line one story above we get brown surfaces <laughs> looks really nice so far and now let's say um, we can uh, support it. Maybe this support not. And because I'm interested what happens, I press on calculate. And you see program is meshing. It needs some time. You see load case one is calculated and you get nothing. Yeah, strange. Yeah, and now the idea of substructures. Of course, you get here support forces, but where does it say rest? Yeah, the surfaces gives us no result. Why? Because behind these surfaces we have substructures. We have here, let's say, beams 
with surfaces, with springs. So there's a really complex model behind and we define it only via surface. Yeah, and you can calculate it. And if you watch the forces, these are the normal axis forces in the member, how the increasing normal axis force. Of course, you have to take care more about loading, but you see, you get calculatable model with the substructure idea. Yeah, and you don't have to model it by hand. You, you only copy surfaces. And now one step more, imagine you have to define windows, of course, because it's really dark without windows so let's create a window in front here yeah so let's say um, we have maybe here a window and yes and we have maybe here a window what happens at first nothing but if I define here a cascading uh, distribution of um, how to say, create surface uh, cells around opening. If I create here lines, the program is able to make a cascadic orientation or a selection of the surface parts. And if I do this, the program is able to consider also windows with the, let's say, uh, beam above, below, and uh, also take care about the right distance of the vertical members so it's it can really be a time saver and you only define a few surfaces with a specific thickness type yeah so um, this is one story of um, substructures the second story uh, what is also important for me is the mentioning of the load transfer surface and for this i prepared a model so i close it and this was an infinite reach in in fm5 generation yeah um, the people ask us in support always hey do you have an element what have no effect for statics or for structure calculation but but can transfer loads and we 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 gave tips and hints to modify stiffness matrix and so on now we have it so if you have a typical structure and you have to load it by snow, yeah, why not make a load case? Of course, uh, we need one. So call it snow, um, call it give you a type, but this is maybe not the, the feature. The feature is that you um, have here a surface, maybe uh, by boundary lines, and you have a specific type load transfer. Now you don't have to define thickness, material, because it's not needed. Yeah, it have no st structural effects. And now we uh, can pick it, can pick the boundary lines uh, to be concentrated, of course. Yeah. Um, and now we have the surface inside. You see it in rendering. And now, we, of course, you can apply here uh, maybe projected the snow load in C. Uh, standard size is one and apply it and if we calculate it we get let's say forces on this structure or sort this surface have no effect so really cool um, we have no surface forces yeah um, you can watch what happens inside yeah you can say uh, surfaces um, you can say here maybe load from distribution and you see the program is distributing the load on the surface as homogen constant load around if you say it should act only in one direction go into properties and say only maybe in y clear and if you say maybe which functions was here more you see is a tropic finite element analysis and the question appears what is this it's a substructure and this means if I calculate this the program have here such a load uh, model below what means he take out this surface in a separate model hinge loaded supported hinged uh, uh, calculate and take the reactions as loads for this structure and this gives you a real picture of load distribution 
yeah, from these surfaces. And uh, of course, this is cool because this surface have no effect for calculation. So you can really rule how forces are flowing, and you can use it not only for plane, then also for let's say curved uh, surfaces. So I want to give you an idea how this is working. So for example, we have here a, a curved uh, roof. So um, the beam is running in uh, right direction. This is maybe vice versa, so we are orientation. Now we say this beam is connected to this line and yep, so structure is changing. Um, oh, maybe first we copy, it's easier. Now we can say this beam is connected to this apply and this beam is connected to this and apply and this surface is not plane then maybe quadrangle and have this line included and now we have a curved surface and if we calculate snow load again for this curved structure it makes no difference the program is taking out this curved surface calculate distribution around and use the reactions as loads on this timber structure. Yeah, So it's only your game to, let's say it's more complex, imagine you have to do this by hand, uh, how you use it. But substructures save time if you have such cases. Yeah. So, and now um, I come to the next point. Um, simply grasp reality. Yeah? Um, let's say this is always our task when we calculate how we can grasp the reality so close as possible but so rough as possible. For this um, we extended uh, our new generation with a few tools. Maybe the most famous one um, are here. So I have here uh, one <laughs> there it is. This is it. I don't find it. Uh, torsion. Member torsion, yes. Yeah. So, um, here's a really easy structure. I think everybody from us at first say yes, I calculate it by hand. Yeah. Simple beam, I section, pinned, supported against torsion here with a main load vertical or is the smaller horizontal load. What happens if we calculate it? If we calculate it, we get, let's say, um, we get here a few forces, let's say, uh, of course, we get a deflection. So let's say we have a vertical deflection, 1.9 centimeter, we have a horizontal deflection. We have a bending moment. We have a bending moment in this direction, 4.5. Yeah? Take a look. This end up let's say in a stress maybe only that you have something in mind in an elastic stress of 280 newton per square millimeter and what is also interesting imagine we have now here a pin support a fork support um, we have a bxl bending and we expect or i would expect also torsion but torsion is zero now, my question, of course, we get bending moments, seems to be real, deflection seems to be real, but the torsion is questionable. Why we have no torsion? Yes, maybe we have to activate in static analysis a few more checks or options. So let's say calculate according third order. Third order, large deformation analysis is always able to 
consider all effects. Could be. Let's try. Yeah, calculate. So you see, meshing, static analysis is running. It seems we have some effects, and you see also Solver have some vibration oscillations in it. Let's take a closer look on results. And wow, we have now a rotation of 845 millirad. Seems to be pretty big. Yeah. Also, if we take a look, bending moment and by clear, but now we have 220 kilonewton meter in horizontal direction from three kilonewton. Sounds a little bit strange to me. Yeah. And even stress. 1616 newton per square millimeter. Wow. Yeah. So it seems to me like a bug. Yeah. But you always have to grasp reality. Is the program able to consider this effect here? Yeah. We have an open cross section with a BXL bending, which should induce some torsion. And the challenge is the program knows only six degrees of freedom. Yeah, it has no warping stiffness in it. And without considering this warping stiffness, you are not really able to model such st stuff with members. So our team implemented for you in FM6, and this is now really new and gives you much more options, the warping torsion degree, the seventh degree of freedom of warping into the main calculation. You can connect it to first, second, third order, as you wish in branched models or, or only in one member models. And if we calculate it now, you will see you get um, results, but fits a little bit more. Now we have a stress of 527, elastic stress. We have, uh, let's say, a torsion of 80. One millirad, so much smaller. We have maybe a bending moment M by the same as before and horizontal 28, so much smaller. And we have also a warping deflection to the end of the supports. <laughs> and we have a primary torsion and a secondary torsion plus a warping moment on this structure. And with considering of the warping plus primary and secondary torsion, we are able to, to, to suction all effects what happens. And we are able to calculate so close to the reality as possible. So, and this could be connected to first, second, third order analysis. So this is what I want to show you. And you are able now to do it. You can use seven degree of freedom in a member structure connected to shells in RFM. This is really new. <coughs> now I want to come to the next point regarding simply grasp reality. And here, um, let's say I open a new example, uh, especially um, regarding connections. So I, I call it joints design. And my example is so easy as, as possible. Now I have two beams, one girder. You see only one load case, but this is not, not the interesting stuff. I have only one load case to have a, a quick calculation as possible. But what is, what are the genes of this model? Yeah, we have beams. We have now here stresses. Let's take a look on Mrs. Stress. Um, maybe what is uh, about 32 uh, Newton per square millimeter on the beams. You see also here zero point and here again uh, the restraint on the column. Yeah. So far, um, let's let's say everything clear. And what is also interesting, we have here in the mid 65, here 47. But we don't know how the force is transferred from this girder to the beam. And for this job, we have, let's say, created an uh, exhausting add-on called steel joints and if I use this I'm able to say on uh, these nodes here nodes I want to create a joint 
I I can select from a hmm. again notes from template now. No. Make it different. Right click. Now, now it's working. Um, I can, let's say, I have a really big uh, uh, library from connections. What you can also create user defined ones, but here it gives you a first idea. Uh, for example, here we select this example and say, please assign this connection to this frame joints. Of course, program is doing it. It, it thinks about uh, why, because you have to adapt this template to the new section sizes. And now we confirm it and say, mm, yeah, looks good. This looks a little bit strange. So I, I don't like it. I modify it. I grasp reality. Yeah, so I say, I want to have here a cap plate on beam one and then I think it's more like, I like it. And now um, we grasp reality, we can specify belt sizes, everything. But here we can also say, we, we want to do ultimate limit design, but also stiffness analysis. And we say, hey, please make an interaction between main structure. Let's say, calculate initial stiffness and generate hinges in the main global model. And uh, with doing this, I have to say the program, okay, please uh, do it for member one or two. And I say, yeah, please for the MY degree for uh, member two. And now we can start calculation, calculate all. And of course, I know this takes a while, but uh, in comparison to FM5, you have now a lot of more options. You can define now the connection like it is. So do we have a cap plate or a stiffener? Do we have different bolt distances? Do we have weld lines? Do we have on every element a weld line? Is it bolted? Is it welded? It's your game. You can decide it. Additionally, um, you can, uh, because this technology models behind a shell model with a nonlinear material law and checks light uh, in the end, the strains. This allows you to apply normal axis for shear force in Y in Z direction, torsion moment, MY and MC bending moment. So you can apply all forces. It's in the independent. It's allowed, yeah. And we also on, we use this for with this concept. Further, you can analyze not only forces and also unit deflection. So we can calculate stiffnesses from it, and now new also to assign it to the global model. So this is uh, gives you a lot of options what you can't do in the old program, but now you can do. So you can recalculate really close to the reality. You can grasp the reality. Uh, of course, uh, maybe on the other side of the metal, you have to wait. Clear. Um, you can accelerate it by by deselecting uninteresting load cases or by calculating parallel on cloud computing. What we also offer, but um, you get a, a, a few uh, uh, options more. And now you see what happens. Yeah, um, We get uh, in the joints design, so let's open tables, go to the joints design, you get a utilization. You get maybe the design check written directly here for all what are done. You get a, a stress and strain view of the connection for every element separately. You can say, show me plastic strain, show me equivalent mesis stress. And finally, um, you get also here hinges on the end of the members. So you have here type of members hinges where the program is writing you the diagram, the reaction or answer diagram of the connection to the model from the stiffness analysis. And if you watch now the result, 
Yeah, if you go here to static analysis, you see now before we had here 65, now we have 74, and here we have uh, 38. So the let's say this part is increased and this is decreased. So you can grasp reality now, interactive. And this brings me now, let's say, to the last point of my uh, part today. Uh, what means uh, evaluate results in a targeted manner. Still a pompous title, of course, but um, I want to show you w which work our developers did for you that you have an easy game in in on all, uh, in, in checking uh, models. Yeah, and um, for this I prepared here a, a structure. Um, where is it? Um, Something this diagram it should be why I don't ah here calculation diagram and um yeah let's take a look at first the model that you see what we are doing so this is a simple beam yeah uh, with a transversal load um the beam is modeled from shells, uh, web with a thickness of 6.5 millimeters, flange have a thickness of 10 millimeters, the ends are supported with uh, line support so it reacts restrained yeah? and um, if you watch the results you will see um, yeah, we have some stress on the supports as expected because it's restrained and we have some stress here maybe from color level we have a higher stress level here than here but this is connected to the load what we have here now let's say I want to give you a picture what we want to do let's say I do want to try to find out the carry in level of this beam but means how much load we can apply let's click to the plastic plastic resistance for this i activate in the add-ons um, let's say uh, the non-linear material behavior plus a structure stability why non-linear materials because I have to learn the material still to be not linear isotropic then to be nonlinear elastic for surfaces. What means this? You can select here di for different diagram types. I take the easiest one, let's say elastic, and then the nonlinear elastic diagram at first with standard Young's modulus and then with the Hardeling modulus, and we yield at 235 uh, Newton per square millimeter in the Mises format. Yeah? What happens if I confirm this setting? Of course, results will be deleted. I can calculate again. <coughs> and um, get results. Let's say the same, because uh, we changed nothing on load. And it's still elastic. Yeah. So now let's try to come into the uh, nonlinear elastic part to get some yielding effect. For this, I take this base load and activate here a stability analysis. And I don't want to calculate now buckling or something like this, and I want to increase loading stepwise. For this, I take the method, incremental method without eigenvalue, and define here some parameters. My starting load vector, maybe we increase it always by factor one, refinement should be done with five in the last step and uh, we want to have maybe 10 increments and because it makes for me no sense to calculate deflections from here to moon we say let's stop at 15 centimeter max and now because this could be a one process and gives me a load, uh, load increasing factor or, or is a, I want to look inside this calculation so I save the results of all steps <clears throat> and if we do this let's say the program have two steps 
one for static analysis for the 10 kN, of course. And the another is the load increasing step. You see now how we increase load stepwise. Now we slowly we come into this yielding effect. Uh, of of course we see only the diagram now. Yeah, not more, not less. So we cannot decide what happens. But and but now later we have to 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 look into this result. And because we store every result separately, we have the chance. Yeah. Of course, such a function works also in RFM5, but now we created something around what makes for you this thing easier. Now, slowly, you see, we have increasing uh, gradient. Uh, uh, we are here uh, on uh, 10 centimeters, so slowly, uh, this reaction is uninteresting for me. We come close to the 15. And you will see what happens if C15 appears, so you have full control. Yeah. Now, yeah, and now he stops and try a second look if it works. So he, he, he try again to, 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 to load it uh, in the last increment. The load factor is already reached so far. You can watch it during calculation, and now I think uh, he will learn it makes no sense and stops calculation. Yeah. So um, this is connected to the stability add-on, uh, only a robot function in this case. But what is not the change? In this view, nothing. Of course, we have to change here incremental method. And now we get a really interesting picture. Red in the middle, red on the right and left side. Seems like a plastic bending moment. Yeah, Plastic load distribution, the same here. What is also new, you have here such a scaling factor. Yeah? You can say this is load factor 7.2, this is load factor 1, what we saw before. Maybe you can change directly here in between. Um, further, um, you have the same box of this factor here on, on, on this result part. You can watch all results. The result, what we're just seeing is the misstress. stress. So we have, uh, let's say, the, the uh, stress um, 235 here in the limit, what we define for yielding. What I like more is the criteria because then I'm independent from the defined limit stress. So I have maybe yielding is with defined with factor one. So if you want to analyze it over length of the model, how you can do it? In this case, we have this result cuts. Um, we can say, please cut, uh, for example, only this surface. Okay. And uh, yeah, of course, we have to say word <laughs> from maybe from the mid to the another side. No? And we should visualize this result in y direction. Now you get the diagram here inside. Of course, you, you can uh, hide this and you see it much more better. But, but uh, what I like more is to select it and to jump into such a result window. And this is now modal programmed what is new in comparison to RFM5 because you can work at the same time in RFM itself if you have two monitors. And uh, now let's say we want to see uh, deflection maybe here U and we want to see here criteria NY and you have again here also get you get here this this increment uh, uh, bar where you say okay this is load increment one then two no problem three slowly we come here to the limit one yeah now you see you have here yielding slowly and now suddenly here it's it's reached and in the middle it's starting so you can analyze it yeah quite easily and additional, what is also um, new now is that you that you get here some maybe you know it from 
you know it by RFM5 that you can drove above these uh, surfaces and can pick something. I pick now one in begin and I can pick one in the middle. And um, but but for me these points are quite random placed, so I don't like this. But now in RFM6 you have the option to say, hey, this. The result points are typed for surfaces, they are stored here in this uh, list uh, where you can specify it and you can say okay the first one is maybe placed one centimeter uh, inside the beam and in the middle and the second is maybe in the middle of the beam 2.5 meter 0 and 0. So now the nodes or result points have the right place um, if you show the result, maybe also uh, here from the uh, incremental analysis, you see maybe here values on surfaces that you get here now a value. So far it's clear, yeah, you can uh, have these values here, but behind this, why I mentioned it is now something new, what was not possible in the old, um, you have here a result diagram viewer. Um, where you can say, please document me, um, for example, um, in the incremental method for the load case 1, um, in horizontal axis the load uh, factor, and in the vertical axis maybe the surface equivalent stress Mises, the max one for the maybe uh, surface web surface, and here not for any nodes and really new for result points maybe for the first one and you see now okay how the load is now in near support uh, elastically increased and then you have this yielding effect and if you copy this diagram and you can change it to to the second point you get it also let's say for the second diagram where it happens really later and now this was always a wish, can I overlay it like in an overhead projector? And now you can do it, you can make a new diagram with a type uh, group. The program is realizing similar diagrams and now you have both results in one scheme. You see now the first one, the blue one, and then at any stage the second is also yielding and quite fast. Yeah? And of course the, the accuracy of this diagram depends on your steps, but this gives you options to, to, to analyze it in a targeted manner. And this is what I wanted to show you. And this brings me now to the end. And I hope I could show you with this uh, few examples the differences to the old generation and how much work our team uh, uh, did to, to uh, fulfill all these wishes what happened in the past, beside all general stuff. Thank you, Andreas, for your nice presentation. I hope you could see yeah, good features or yeah, good reasons for switching from RFM5 to RFM6. Just try it out with the trial version, or maybe you Bought the version 6 already. And hint, I showed that hint also last week. You can book the RFM6 course. It's a course for beginners. Click on that links, please, at the bottom for more information and for the prices. And you can also scan the QR code for our free courses. Okay. That's also all from my side. I thank you for your attention. Thanks to Andreas Niemeyer again for the presentation. Thanks to Florian Hittemann for the support by answering the questions. I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. Have a nice day. Bye bye.